guys, MG Pi here from Lunio. Today, I'll be showing you how to deploy a watcher for Rosenbridge on Linode. And Linode is a VPS service provider, so that means they provide servers on the cloud. And this is a good option if you don't want to run a watcher on your local system or your PC, because you always have to have it on. Or if you don't have your own um, server or PC always running at home, this is the next best option. So let's go ahead and create a Linode account. You want to hit sign up and follow all the prompts. And yeah, after that's done, you should be directed to a screen like this. And um, it's cloud.linode.com slash Linodes. And I have a couple of my own servers here. You can ignore that. You won't have anything. And just blurred out my IP addresses here. So yeah, let's hit create and select a distribution. So an operating system, find that Ubuntu is the most user-friendly. And yeah, select the region that you're closest to. I'm just going to select a random US location. And yeah, you want to hit shared CPU. And uh, a watcher isn't doesn't require much compute. So you can get away with one gigabyte RAM one and one CPU core. They recommend um, two gigabytes of RAM and two CPU cores. I'm just going to do Linode two gigabytes. And yeah, let's label the Linode. And type a secure root password because someone can access your um, service if um, your IP is leaked. You can ignore SSH keys, that's for advanced users. It just lets you bypass passwords. Yeah, so let's go ahead and hit create. Now it's provisioning. This will take a couple minutes. Yeah, it'll just stay ready when you can when you're set to connect. All right, so as you can see, we're running. So I'm on a Windows system right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my terminal. Just search up terminal in the search bar. This should pop up. And if you're a Mac user, you can also follow along. It's it's very similar, and I don't think you need to install anything extra. So so even if you're on Mac or Windows, you can go ahead and type SSH, and then you can see that the user is root. It's always root by default for Linode. So you want to type root at and your IP address. So I'm just going to hit copy and paste it here. It's different for uh, each Linode you create, so don't copy what I have here. And enter and just type yes here. Now you want to type that password you entered while creating the Linode. And yeah, we're in. So the the best practice whenever you are creating an instance or come back after a while, like maybe like a week, you want to update your system. So you want to first do sudo apt get update, then follow, followed by ampersand twice, type again sudo apt get upgrade dash y and yeah this just updates all your um your system and yeah it'll take a minute or two it's always a good practice you know in case there's any security patches that needs to be handled all right so i'm running through an update and i just suddenly had this screen pop up you may not get this um if you don't just ignore this but if you do you want to hit tab and then hit enter it just moves your cursor to okay because this is a terminal you can't really use your mouse and yeah just let this continue so again i got this screen again you may not get this so hit tab and enter and let it continue all right looks like it's done so i'm going to type clear just to clear the screen now the first thing that you got to do is install no sorry the first thing you got to do is um you got to install your um sorry you want to change your change users so you know it's not best security to leave it as a root user because that just allows if someone got access that allows or if any like program gets access they have full com control over your server it's just not good obviously so let's create a user so you want to type add user and then type whatever username you want i want to do mgpy enter yeah then add a password for this uh, different from your root password and you can just skip this hit enter and you're done clear now let's uh, add this to the 
uh, group. So you want to go ahead and type this out, and then uh, what is it? Yeah, my uh, username. So user mod dash a capital G sudo ngpy enter. And yeah, the user is added to the sudo group. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a new tab. So you can just exit out of this open terminal again. You don't need that anymore. So again, I'm going to go ahead and type SSH so I can, so uh, you can also switch it from the shell directly, but I find this easier. So just we're going to make a new SSH instance and we're going to log in as the user we just created. And going forward, if you want to check in on your server or run an update, always log in as this user. So SSH MGPy at, and you want to copy that server IP address again, paste it, hit enter, and enter that password you just created for your user. And yeah, you're in. You don't have to do any update because we just did that. And yeah, now let's go ahead and install Docker. So I'll leave the links in the description. So just these two commands. This gets the script. Then you can run the script. Let's run with sudo in case it needs anything. Enter enter that password again. There you go. Just Docker runs the script, it goes through the installation process. When it's done, it should have Docker. And we can go on to get the watcher files. Alright, Docker is done, didn't take very long. Let me clear my screen again. Yeah, let's go ahead to the Rosen repository. So we need to copy this. So clone clone to the repository. And if you type ls, you can see the folder it just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and first remove this Docker thing. So do rm space get Docker sh enter and just remove that. So yeah, so see how it creates um the operation folder. So you want to get into that. And now I typed ls again, and you can see all the content of that. You can see watcher folder exists. So anything that's blue is a folder, or also known as a directory. So I'm going to go into watcher. So cd watcher. Yeah, these are this is everything inside of the watcher. So we're now in the watcher folder. Let's clear again. Now let's follow all this. So we're going to first um make a copy of the env. Copy. Yeah, creates a new env file. And now we have to fill all this in. So hit nano. This is just a text editor. It comes by the default. The easiest easiest to use. And now you want to navigate with your arrow key up, down, left, right. So let's enter a password. So I'm going to do Rosen as my password. Make sure it's secure, obviously. And you can't have any uh, special symbols. And I'm going to have the user as Lilium. Same thing for the database. You can leave this as is, or you can change it for extra security. Same thing here. You can change it for extra security, or you can leave it. And you must leave these two as instructed in the GitHub. So I'm going to hit Control O, hit Enter and hit control x yeah that's done if you want to just double check that you filled it out properly you can type cat space dot env and yeah you can see all of the contents of the file so let's clear this away and now we want to change the permissions of the logs folder here let me show you so if you ls you can see a folder in blue called logs i'm going to just change the permission with this and now we want to create so this command creates a folder called config okay it's already there so it creates a file inside of config called local.yaml and that's just another configuration file all right that's done and you can ignore this since we're not on mac so although the system you're using might be a mac the server itself that we're connected to here so you can see you're connected to a server that's uh that's a linux so you don't worry about that so let's do this command, let's copy this command. So this just uses Docker and gets all the files. So as you can see, we get this error. That's because I didn't preface it with sudo. So you have to give it that permission, sudo docker compose pull, and hit enter. If you're doing all this as a root user, it won't ask for like sudo or anything because root is sudo, a root user. But again, it's always best to do this under a different user. So root always gives everyone access. Yeah, so just give this like a minute and let it do its job. All right, so everything's done. I'm gonna clear it again. Now you want to type cd config and enter. 
if I do ls, you can see the local dot yaml we created like a minute ago. So I'm going to hit nano. Do your local dot yaml. Enter. It's just a blank file. There's nothing here. So you want to scroll down to the Rosen documentation, and you want to copy this. And this is specifically for um ergo. So here, if you can just leave this as is. Um, if you want, you can set the initial height to um whatever it is currently because you haven't started anything. Um, I'm gonna leave it by default. Actually, let's check what the height is. So you can go to explorer dot ergo platform dot com. You can see the most recent height is right here. You can copy that if you want. And we can paste it here again. You can leave it. It doesn't really matter. This just allows for a faster sync if you're down the next time. And yeah, here, you want to enter your wallet mnemonic. So if you, do already, if you don't have already, please install Nautilus wallet. Or you can do the Ergo Mobile wallet. And once you have it, it should look like this. Um, I already had a, like a test account. So you want to hit that. And you want to create hit add new wallet create wallet and just follow this and you want to copy this recovery phrase it's pretty important make sure you write it down somewhere safe and secure again you can do you don't need nautilus you can do this on the ergo wallet mobile app so yeah let's go ahead to our terminal you can paste the mnemonic here so you could leave this as as is if you have your own node you can use it um i wouldn't worry too much about it Yeah, so we just leave all, all, the, all of this the same. Hit Control O, Control X. Yeah, that's done again. If you want to see, like just to make sure that your files filled out, you hit cat, local.yaml, and there you go. Things done. Let's clear out and you want to hit cd space dot dot enter and just that just gets us back to the previous folder we were in. Hit ls and you can see that again. So now local.yaml is filled out. Um yeah, so everything looks good. So now you want to hit, uh, you want to go to Docker Compose. So hit nano docker compose .yaml. And Here you can see this is the Docker file. So this just sets everything up. It's like a template saying, hey, I want to run these services through Docker. So here you can see this is the UI. So this is like the website that you access. And since we're on uh, on a VPS, we won't be able to access the the port itself. So you want to make these changes real quick. Okay, so I was showing you this to edit this, but it might not be the best idea. So so here, so what this specifies is um this address here means that if you're connected, if you're at the server itself, so if this is like your server. So if I was running this on my PC directly instead of the server, then I could go to a site like this, localhost uh, 3030, and um, it would pop up. It would be just fine because it was on my system itself. However, this is on a server, and that can pose a challenge because you're connecting to the server. You're not, you're not actually, you're not actually there. So if you want to always have it available so you, if you want this ip address you can go to the ip address and type 3030 so remember 3030 is the default uh watcher port so if you change that you want to make sure it's reflected here but we didn't we just left that blank so we can just leave it as 3030 so if you go to this uh site then the thing is it'll pop up but here's the problem you may not want to share your your IP address, like someone gets your IP address, they can go to your UI and play with the whole thing. And you don't, you might not want someone to have access that to that. It could be a vulnerability, who knows? So that's why it might not be a good idea. So if you only, if you want that, then what you got to do is you just got to go here, just erase all that and just type 30, 30 or whatever watcher report you want. It doesn't matter. And yeah, once you hit that, you want to hit control O, control X and save save it and then after you finish running which i'll just show you in a moment you can go to this your 
Linode IP address, go to the port and it'll pop up. So I don't want my instance to be accessible to anyone who has the IP. I'm not taking the chance of this getting leaked. So I'm not going to do this. So I'm just going to leave everything as is. So I'm not going to save this change I made. So no, don't save. You can see here that nothing saved. It's back to what it was originally. So let's leave it like that. Okay. And I'll show you in a second how we can, we can still connect to it even though it's not exposed to it we, even though it's not exposed publicly all right so we didn't do any changes so you don't have to worry about going and editing the docker file so you want to go ahead and hit sudo docker space compose up dash b enter and this there you go this creates everything and the service is going to be up so as i said now, if you go to the IP and go to port 3030 or whatever you put, it's not going to load because it's not ex exposed publicly, So, which is a good thing. So, now, so just wait maybe like a minute or so for this to complete. Uh, it might look like it's frozen, but once you get that terminal that allows you to type again, like here, you know you'll be good to go. So let's just wait a minute or two for that. Okay, there we go. It's done. So everything's ready. If you want, just for fun, you want to look at everything happening, like the logs, you can type sudo docker compose logs dash f. You can just see this is all everything connecting. It's pretty cool. And clear out of this. Yeah, so now you want to access the UI, right? So let's open a new ter terminal. Again, it doesn't matter. You can close this. Yeah, so here's what you want to type. You want to SSH into your system again with your username. And you want to type dash L and then type this IP address 127.0.0.1 then your port and this again the same thing 3030. So this just says that hey I want this server's port to be connected to my PC's post. So now it maps that server's port to the, the system's port itself. So the only downside of this is at any, any time you want to access your website your your own Rosenwatcher website, you have to type this SSH command. Um, yeah, it's a downside, but again, it's, you're, you're, you're sacrificing um, you're sacrificing security for this. If you don't do this, you're sacrificing security. So yeah, so let me type this, hit enter. Again, type your password for that username. I'm in, so you don't have to do anything. So it's done. So now if I go to localhost 3030, let me, Go there boom there you go this is your website so let it load setup is done you can watch other videos on how to actually deposit collateral because i'm not going to be showing any of that yeah this is the end of the tutorial thanks for watching good luck